name is Daniel. Uh, so I'm gonna ask you a couple of questions to start with. So do you feel like what you're doing is not really meant for you? Or do you, would you rather be doing something else entirely but don't know where to start? Uh, do you feel like you're a, a square peg in a round hole, like you don't fit? Um, maybe uh, you're thinking that if you save enough money, maybe one day you can live the life you want. So in the future, you're going to be happy. You're going to do something that is meaningful for you. You tell yourself time and again, you just need to stick a little bit longer. And then I'll finally leave this behind me. So you're going to finally go to what you're, uh, what you're looking for. But you never do. You keep waiting, right? Just one more year. Just one more uh, promotion. Maybe just one more pay raise. And then I can save enough so I can finally pursue my dreams and try to do something different. I've been there and I've done that. Uh, I was a developer for 14 years. I was a data analyst for, for another six years and finally data scientist. I worked in plenty of different um, companies and industries and I was trying to find my place, right? I'm trying to find a place where I fit, that a place that's meaningful and that has work that, uh, that speaks to me. And, and, and I, I, I jumped around a lot of places in multiple countries trying to look for this, to find a place that is good for me. Uh, and it was only when I actually tried something different that uh, I was finally able to find myself. So right now I'm freelancing, I'm writing, I'm teaching, and I'm working for myself on my own terms. Uh, and this has been quite a journey. And I, I learned a lot about myself and about the world in general. Uh, and the, in this presentation, I wanted to, to give you some insights, some, some, some things that I learned along the way that may be helpful if you are in this journey, if you want to, to pursue something on your own, right? And uh, at the end of it, it all boils down to one question. What are we afraid of? And notice that I, I, I say we because I was, I'm still, I can still say that I'm a bit afraid. Uh, what are we afraid of? And that's the unknown, right? Uh, so we are afraid of uncertainty. We're afraid of what we don't know. We, we're afraid when we don't know what to expect, right? Uh, they say that people don't like change. Uh, I mean, I, don't, I can say that sometimes I don't like change, but I think that it's go deeper than that. It's not that you don't like only change, but that you don't like what's, because change brings uncertainty. Um, so what, what is the unknown, right? Uh, I, I would say there are two types of unknowns. And this comes from, some, from a former Secretary of Defense of the US, Donald Rumsfeld, and people made fun of him because he said there are two types of unknowns, the known unknowns and the unknown unknowns. Um, so what is the known unknown? This is something that you don't know that's gonna happen, but that you can objectively prepare for it. So let's say that you, maybe you, you can uh, uh, get into a car crash, right? Uh, or you can hit your car. So what do you do? You don't know if this is gonna happen, right? But what you, what you can do, you can buy insurance. You, you buy car insurance to protect against something that you don't know if it's gonna happen, but you know that it may happen. The same goes for health insurance, right? You know that eventually you're gonna be sick, you're gonna need some medical attention, uh, and then you buy health insurance. You hope that you don't have to use it, right? Because it's better to not have it go into an accident, but you can prepare for it. But when it comes to the unknown unknown, then how can you prepare for something that you don't even know what it is, right? So there's no insurance against everything. Well, the only thing that you can do at this point is to trust your future self, uh, that, uh, that he, yourself in the future, can handle it, right? Uh, so and th this is a big ass, right? Because uh, most of the time we want to try to prepare and to, to be able to be ready to handle whatever comes in our, on our way, right? Uh, and how, how can you help? Well, basically what you're trying to do is to help our future selves to uh, better equip to handle whatever uh, life throws at them. So how can you do that? How can you help your future self? You can do it by reducing the number of unknown unknowns, right? Uh, that's uh, like straightforward, but how do actually do you do that? And one, one safe way of doing that is sticking to the basics, right? It's treading the well-trodden path. It's doing as everyone else is doing, 
like you get the job, you, you, you follow the career path that's laid uh, in front of you. Uh, but where does this path lead you? Do you know? Do you know where you're going to go or just following the others, right? Does anyone know where this is leading? Uh, so it must be good, right? Because, I mean, if people are doing that, if people know that, they probably know something that I don't, right? This is what I think this is, imagine this is what everyone feels like. Oh, maybe I don't know that, but, but he, he, this other person is doing so. This other person probably knows uh, that's best. So everyone is doing that. Everyone is going into to this path, so it, it must be good. So you follow along. But why do we do that, right? Uh, at the end of the day, we are actually truly afraid of failure, right? Well, why do you follow something that's the basics? Because we don't want to fail. Uh, so this is very powerful, right? So if we don't want to fail, what do we want to do? Well, of course, we want to succeed, right? Um, and it's really hard to succeed on your own, right? This is what scares us. Uh, and you cannot really engineer it or manufacture success. Uh, some people are going to say that's possible if you have the means. Maybe some, some people have the means to actually manufacture success. But the regular person like myself, like I imagine you that, that are watching this, you cannot manufacture it, right? This is something that's going to happen. You can try to do your best, but you cannot guarantee it in any way. So. It only, success only happens if you are lucky enough. Um, and then I know that at this point, some people are going to be mad at this and say, oh, come on, I, it's not like uh, I need to be lucky. I can work hard. I can, I can make it, I can break it or make it. Uh, if I work hard enough, I'm going to succeed. I mean, of course, there is truth to that. You, 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 can, you should work hard enough to, in order to succeed, but this does, does not guarantee the success. You still need luck. Uh, but this is luck, not the blind kind of random luck like winning the lottery. This is luck in a sense as it was stated by Roman philosopher Seneca. Luck is what happens when preparation meets opportunity. And there are two key words here, preparation and opportunity. So how, how do we go from this? What is an opportunity? An opportunity is actually an unknown unknown. The, uh, the unknown unknowns does do not necessarily have to be bad things, right? We are talking about uh, maybe pandemics or disasters, but this not, does not need to be the case. An opportunity, something that's really good that may happen by chance to you, is also unknown unknown. Um, the fact is, sometimes when something happen, good happens to you, you need to be prepared to be able to handle it, to seize the opportunity, right? Uh, what's what's the, the issue here is, you, since they are, by definition, unknown, you cannot prepare yourself for all of them. It's impossible to prepare for every possible opportunity that comes your way. So you need to, to you need to be able to you need to be able to handle it. So you need to prepare. You can prepare for some of those um, those opportunities that may come your way. Uh, and important to not stick with a single objective only, right? Because the more shots you take, the better chances you have. If you bet small, you may fail small in case it doesn't work. Uh, shouldn't, if, you, if you go for one big project and it fails, it's a big failure. It's much harder to recover from a big failure, financially speaking, psychologically speaking, because if you invested so much time, so much energy, so much money into something, and all of a sudden it fails, it's going to feel bad, right? It's un unavoidable. If you, if, you, if you start small, then you have... You, you're protecting yourself and you're making better, uh, improving your odds because you, you feel if you go small, you may have more chances uh, at playing the game. So this is one very important thing. Um, and here I, I, I introduce you the formula for success. And no, I'm not claiming that I have a, a formula for a short thing or anything like that. But I call this the percent equation. And I think that it outlines the... the the factor at play when it comes for success. So we have uh, five factors here they split into groups. So the first one is uh, preparation and resilience. And the second group is circumstances, networking, and timing. So let's go uh, quickly which, uh, over uh, each one of those elements. So preparation, these are your skills and experience. This is what you know, right? This is what you're good at, what, what you like to do, uh, your skill set. And then 
we have resilience. Resilience is your, your ability to overcome setbacks. So this is why I stress that failing small is important because if you fail small, you have it's easier to, to overcome this setback and keep playing the game. So resilience is very important. You have circumstances. These are external factors. You have absolutely no control over them. Uh, you can think of this as like uh, the economy, right? If you're in a recession, it's going to be bad for everyone. So it, it, it's harder to be successful in a recession. This is true for you. This is true for everyone. And this is not your fault, right? This is something that happens to you. It's a circumstance. You have networking, which here I, I, I said that these are the relationships you have access to. Um, some, some people may say that you had some degree of control of it. This may be true, but um, most of the time you don't have like a full control of this uh, because this is depending on the geography, where, where you are, which college you attended, you know. So there is a lot of stuff that, that is out of your hands in, in here. And finally, we have timing which means being in the right place at the right time. This is, by definition, random, right? So uh, you, you, this is what you're waiting for. But while you wait, you need to, to be ready for the opportunity. So you need to work on the two parts that you have control of, preparation and resilience. So resilience is like psychological preparation. So preparation is key here. And here, and then I ask, are you prepared to be lucky? Uh, in the Seneca sense, right? Are you prepared to seize the opportunity when it arises? Um, these are um, just a couple of topics that I address here, the unknown and success. There is much more to it. And here you can see uh, 16 different topics. Uh, these topics are chapters in my book. Uh, and here, this is uh, the, the, the book, You're Not Your Job, Going Above and Beyond for Yourself. So if you want to learn more about it, and if, if you want to, to check uh, details, you can, you can visit the website, you can join the waitlist. This is going to be released real soon. Uh, and I hope you, you enjoy this, this short talk about the, the, the unknown and success. So thank you very much. Thank you for having me here. And I hope you enjoyed this.